Optimizing your physique if you're a night shift worker, whether you want to build muscle or drop body fat, just altered sleep cycles can make it a real challenge. So this is what we're gonna dive into today. We're gonna talk about how you might be shifting your schedule around for the night shift to optimize sleep and wake cycles, get into nutrition, get into training, and also some supplements that can aid you in this process as well. I've worked with several night shift workers. I worked with police officers, firefighters, nurses, other unique jobs that require you to just work at totally strange hours of the, of the night. There is more occurrence of cardiometabolic health issues like diabetes and cardiovascular disease because sleep is that important and it can cause lots of fatigue for one, but also hormone disruption and altering hormones then in turn cause you higher risk for diabetes where you're not processing carbohydrates as efficiently or even your lipids and having skewed uh, lipid profiles. So what can we really do around this? And a lot of the strategies I'm gonna give you is trying to sync someone up based on their natural chronotype. If you haven't had a chronotype, and some people have different chronotypes where ma mainly we're gonna focus on the sleep-wake cycle. So you might be a morning person, in other words, or you might be a night person. And usually if you find that if you're a night person, those people don't have as much disruption in hormone levels and metabolism as someone that's doing more of a morning person trying to do nights. So what does that mean for you? It's like, well, hell, John, I have to work my job, so even if I'm a morning person, it doesn't really matter. Well, that being said, maybe there is some way you can work around that just to let you know. What can we do to actually shift that sleep-wake cycle and make it just not as impactful if you are a shift worker? And what really regulates the sleep-wake cycle the most is daylight exposure. We all, you might be familiar with melatonin, but as nighttime occurs, melatonin levels increase and that syncs us to this biological clock, circadian rhythm. And then when you have daylight exposure, it lowers melatonin levels and that helps sync you up. So it's gonna be very important if you're a shift worker that for your own biological night, which is gonna be you know when you're actually sleeping, that when you wake up, that you get some daylight exposure so you can have that increase in melatonin levels. So if you're working uh, and sleeping till, you know, some people are sleeping till 3 p.m. in the afternoon, wake up and now make sure you get outside and have some daylight exposure if you have that available to you. And also we gonna make sure that you have a good sleep environment, right? You have blackout curtains, but if we do have to switch between those shifts, so it's a four days on, four days off, we can still make those shifts adjust, but let's look at what we wanna do nutrition and training wise around this. So around nutrition, there's been a term called chrononutrition. So it's basically that there are is a nutrition aspect that will shift someone to a certain circadian pattern. And it kind of goes off a 12 hour cycle. So whatever that 12 hour window is for you, that's really when you wanna consume most of your food and that's gonna help sync you up to that new pattern that you might be following. Now the real issue with shift workers is that when you're moving someone that is on a daytime to a nighttime schedule and now they're eating at nighttime, that, that eating at nighttime, a few things happen at night. For one, the digestive processes slow down. We also see larger increases in glucose at times that you are eating. So that's when you start getting into these issues of metabolic problems. Now this is in sedentary individuals though. So if you're the shift worker that's training, that's where it really changes that. And so I would want to sync up your nutrition around training. And we can't talk about nutrition without training. Because for you, what I would advise is that you train, if you're moving to that night shift, prior to the night shift. Because a bout of training can also help shift you into that new sleep-wake cycle for days and nights. So I would try to plan your training prior to the night shift, and that'll, for one, help keep you more alert, but also we can prioritize your nutrition window around this training bout. So let's say that you have, you're getting up at 4 p.m. to start your biological daytime. You get meal one in, you go train, you have your normal post-workout meal, then you have the remaining meals you can just spread throughout the nighttime. And that would be perfectly fine because you're not gonna run into as much as of those metabolic issues like someone that's just not even working out. 
Now, the thing that I would say is that you still might notice some decrease in GI function at night. And your digestive enzymes, there's less output, GI tract starts to slow down. So you might wanna really put, and what I usually advise is 40 to 50% of your carbohydrate intake around that training window. What I've seen with clients where we're shifting from back to daytime is that daytime window is really small. So you might not have a lot of time to get a lot of meals in. Then what you'll find is when you go to nights is that that's a really long day. So what I do for some of these clients that have that type of schedule is it's okay that across a 48 hour span that we get the average calorie intake in. This might not matter for everyone, but it's a tool and a strategy that I wanna utilize in place. I would try to also standardize that training time as well for nutrition purposes and training purposes. So if you're the shift worker that goes in at 7 p.m., and you're training at 4 p.m., try to train at that same time every day. Then it makes nutrition really simple. Now with training, another piece of advice that I found is that with shift workers coming off when they've done days and they switch the nights and coming back to days, that daytime to try to go train, it's the hardest training session to do because they've already been kind of sleep deprived and, and usually coming off a lot of fatigue. I usually make that day when you're switching back to daytime off from training. Just let that be a recovery day because you need to be able to drop off fatigue to be able to, if you're dieting, make sure a large percentage is coming from fat and not muscle because that's what I have seen in clients that are on these shift patterns is that you'll get them so lean and they just hit the wall and they're not getting any leaner because you can't manage the fatigue side of it. So they end up just getting a smaller person of themselves or they're not changing at all and they're stalling. Same thing could go for muscle gain though. You might see more partitioning towards body fat and not towards actually building this, this muscle tissue out. I would put the hardest training session when you have your best ability to recover. The last thing I wanna leave you with is some supplements that you're gonna to find to be very beneficial in this. Using melatonin is a big one, like I mentioned earlier in the video, to help shift that sleep-wake cycle and the circadian rhythm. So when you're coming off that night shift back into days and you're making that transition, melatonin is drastically important to help do that. And I would recommend using like Animal Pack PM. That will have melatonin in it. It'll also have L-tryptophan, which is a precursor to uh, serotonin into melatonin, which will help. Also some valerian root, which will help just get you back to sleep so you, you can have some deep quality sleep in place. Other supplements that I recommend are these chronobiotics. Basically, these are supplements that'll help shift you into that sleep-wake cycle that's aligning with what you need. And one, of course, is caffeine, makes a tremendous difference. And what I would recommend, which would be helpful, is like our energy performance chews, which in each chew is 25 milligrams of caffeine and also some L-tyrosine. And caffeine, it competes with adenosine, which you have adenosine receptors in the brain, which basically make you sleepy. Caffeine blocks these receptor sites, so it keeps you more alert and wakeful. Now, I would recommend to cut this out about seven to eight hours before your actual biological sleep time, because that could keep you um, up. It doesn't take a lot of caffeine, but I would spread it out. So these can allow you to microdose your caffeine and spread out the amount versus having a large hit of it. Another thing that I would spread out too would be creatine. Creatine also competes with the adenosine receptor and it phosphorylates adenosine. So creatine has been awesome to help that with the effects of sleep deprivation and keep you more alert. So there's an absolute synergy between creatine and caffeine utilized for like a shift worker for alertness and cognitive function. The last one that I would leave you with is for one, you're gonna need some micro minerals um, that might be harder to get. So all those micronutrients like zinc, magnesium, all those can be impactful for a shift worker for improving sleep quality. Even vitamin D will be extremely important, especially if you're one that's not able to get out to a lot of sunlight. So you might just cover all bases by doing something like Animal Pack that can fill in all those nutritional gaps that you might be missing, um, especially if you're getting to the rigors of, of contest prep or fat loss phase, where all that food volume is starting to get really, really low you might need something like this to help plug in the gaps. Utilize these strategies the best of your ability. I know it can be an extreme challenge when this is just what you have to do for a living, but you also have high-end physique goals. The big thing here is that if you fail to plan, plan to fail. 
And I think that that's where it happens a lot of times for people that just, you know, give up and realize like, hey, my lifestyle is not gonna be optimal. I'm just not gonna do anything about it. That doesn't have to be the case at all. And I know high level bodybuilders that still did shift work, that got in tremendous contest shape, won shows, and developed a ton of muscle mass at the same time. So this is, doesn't have to be a limiting factor for you. It's just simply educating and trying to implement these strategies and find what works best. So if you have questions, leave them down below. If you're a shift worker and it's a tip that I didn't cover, tell us down in the comments so someone else could benefit from it. And thank you for tuning in.